Seed oils, not healthy even in insulin sensitive people. Dr. Ben Bickman, Dr. Brett Schur. In the presence of enough energy and insulin, that then um, the omega-6 fatty acids can potentially be detrimental to the fat cells, specifically linoleic acid, um, that it can cause it to grow improperly and lead to mm -hmm. insulin resistance. So to flip that on his head then, if someone um, was in a hypocaloric diet or if someone had low insulin levels, then would you think the effects, the negative effects would be um, attenuated or just simply not present in that context? Yes, in, in the context of metabolic function, yes, I think in, in a state of low energy and low insulin that the negative effects of linoleic acid peroxides um, or related peroxides at the fat cell would be mitigated, that it wouldn't matter as much if you're not allowing adipogenesis because there's no stimulus for adipogenesis. The stimulus is for lipogenesis or hypertrophy rather than hyperplasia. So yes, I think those consequences would be mitigated at the fat cell and then insulin resistance in a broader level. Adipogenesis, formation of adipocytes, fat cells from stem cells. Lipogenesis, acetyl-CoA converts into triglycerides for storage as fat. But having said that, I'm not saying that the lipid peroxides wouldn't be damaging in other ways. There are other things that these lipid peroxides can do to, say, alter mitochondria as, as it's altering the lipid profile in cardiolipin. So I'm not saying even then that, that now we can give the linoleic acid a, a clean bill or, or, or a green light. No. The observational is the worst, the clinical study is the best, and the mechanism explains what we see in the clinical study. Or, or it doesn't, and it was, just wasn't that relevant. It was only relevant at the level of a cell, um, and, which is too artificial of a model. So yeah, on the observational end, there are so many potential biases that get their way worked in, that, that get worked into those kinds of studies, like healthy user bias, where people who are avoiding saturated fat, they are right. in, in, in favor of, say, seed oils, because they've been told it's healthy. They're engaging in other healthy habits that just don't get accounted for in the questionnaire that they've been given. So I give very little weight to the observational studies. In fact, I think that's one of the plagues of modern nutritional science. I, I don't think epidemiology should be used in nutrition. I think it should only be used in, in true diseases. Big clinical studies, again, no surprise to your audience, the Minnesota coronary experiment, the, the Sydney Heart study, which was almost as good as you could get in, in controlling an environment over many, many years a long enough period of time to actually measure death. You know, you and I both know most clinical studies are a few weeks, maybe a few months at the most. You just can't measure death in a few months. Mm -hmm. But these studies were, were, were very big. And of course, the bigger it gets and the longer it gets, the more potential error you introduce. But they, they totally refuted the idea that these polyunsaturated fats were better and in over overeating saturated fat and in fact suggested that the focus on on polyunsaturated fat at the expense of saturated might in fact have been harmful um so so that's what those two studies showed that it was actually perhaps a net negative to yeah. to cutting back saturated and focusing more on polyunsaturated seed oils not healthy even in insulin sensitive people dr ben bickman dr brett Schur. Dr. Schur says, in the presence of sufficient energy and insulin, as you have said, linoleic acid can be detrimental to fat cells, cause improper growth, lead to insulin resistance. If someone was on a hypocaloric diet or had low insulin levels, what then? Dr. Bickman, yes, in the context of metabolic function, in a state of low energy and low insulin, the negative effects of linoleic acid and related peroxides at the fat cell would be mitigated. They are not allowing adipogenesis because there's no stimulus for it. Instead, there is stimulus for lipogenesis, which is hypertrophy, the cell size growth. Adipogenesis, formation of adipocytes, fat cells from stem cells. Lipogenesis, acetyl-CoA converts into triglycerides for storage as fat. I am not saying that 
lipid peroxides are not damaging in other ways. They are. They alter mitochondria while altering the lipid profile and cardiolipin, which is part of the inner mitochondrial membrane. So, even in low energy and low insulin situations, I cannot give linoleic acid a green light. Observational studies, food consumption surveys, have so many biases that get worked into them, such as healthy user bias. For example, those who avoid saturated fat because they've heard it's unhealthy consume large amounts of seed oils, which they have heard are healthy. And they also have other healthy habits in general. But these habits are not accounted for in the survey. Dr. Bickman says these are the plagues of nutrition science. Epidemiology, which is observational or survey research, should not be used in nutrition, only in true disease research. Two big clinical studies, the Minnesota Coronary Experiment, the Sydney Heart Study. These were as good as you can get, controlled the environment over many, many years, long enough to measure the death rates. These totally refuted the idea that polyunsaturated fats, or seed oils, are better than saturated fats. The studies actually showed, according to Dr. Bickman, actually a net negative to cutting back on saturated and focusing on polyunsaturated fat, or seed oils. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.